What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Creature Cast, the official console creatures podcast. I am your host today, Steve Vegvari, and alongside me, as always, my good pal Bobby. How the heck are you this week? I am beautiful. It is a supremely rainy week. I'm sure mm. you know what's going on in the GTA, but um, mm. it's it's not doing anything for the heat. Like it's been super rainy and flooding season, but it's it's still like 30 degrees outside, and I don't get it. I don't understand it, but yeah, uh, this week, uh, well, yesterday at the time of recording, uh, Toronto got hit by a major power outage. The highways yeah. were flooded. Parts of the, the the entire like transit hub of Toronto was flooded as well. It was chaos. chaos uh, yeah. and I, I got hit as well with a power outage for about two hours, and I said to myself, Na- naively i said to myself hey this is a great opportunity to step away from my desk yeah. i'm gonna go get an iced coffee lo and behold as soon as i started walking out of my my building i was like oh this isn't just me this isn't my building that got hit by the power outage it's it was, the entire yeah. west end north end yeah. of the city mass like all the way to like etobicoke which people yeah. people who don't know um uh, toronto is like that's the next city over the next major city so it was it was so widespread uh, because of the insane. storm. It's I crazy. think they said like 66 millimeters of rain in four days that we've gotten, which is, yep. I think where I am, it was like the most rain in over 100 years. So that kind of tells you, yeah, it was a serious rainfall yesterday and it was not fun driving. It was like very hard to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, on the DVP, which is Toronto's highway. Well, there was a guy swimming. There was yeah. a guy swimming out of his People car. had to abandon their cars. Yeah, that's it's, it's wild. It, it's wild, but uh, everything's up and running here. Uh, we're 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 back up and running. Everyone's got electricity now in Toronto, and uh, that means it's back to back to playing games, back to gaming, ladies and gentlemen. And we have a whole bunch of games to talk about this week. Um, yeah, I mean, this past week we'll, we'll start off with Concord. Why not start off with Concord? This past week was the closed beta, but also yeah. kind of open as well because at last minute they kind of pulled the pulled the shoot and said hey people with playstation plus they can get on in on the action alongside everyone that pre-ordered the game which is pretty cool um and yeah bobby did you get a chance to play much of the the beta over the weekend yeah so yeah maybe maybe three or four hours at most it was just yeah unfortunately not as much time as i wanted to but That's i got to fine. like level yeah maybe level 10 i think i got pretty decently leveled but um yeah. i level thoughts like it's a good destiny uh, uh, i don't want to say a ripoff but it is like a destiny adjacent game like it feels like mm-hmm. a sibling in that regard maybe like a oh, younger sibling time. yeah but um i liked it i thought it was a great um formula skin mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it I don't know if it's a hero shooter are we can are we calling it a hero yeah shooter? yeah is i it? think so i i think it's pretty close to being you know in the middle ground between a destiny and an overwatch that's how i read it yeah so that's fair but yeah i mean i liked it there are some characters obviously um god i can't remember but she's the second character she does she got the the crossbow and the, the crossbow yeah, Haymar. Haymar is the one she's amazing the she's my amazing. go-to she's yep. so overpowered that basically i was killing everything in one shot with her uh-huh. Because yeah, I mean she she's literally got the best move set. She's able she's got that destiny float when you're jumping through the air, which I feel like this game was sorely missing. Mm. I don't know if every character has got it, but the ones I played, she was the only one who did it. But like overall, like I, I had a lot of fun. The maps were really um pretty intuitive, I would say. Like they they make sense, they flow well. Yeah. You kind of know what you're getting to at every section of the map. There, there's obviously, you know hot spots where you're fighting other enemies and like where you're going you kind of know what's there so you can kind of plan with your team what to do but yeah i mean i think this is a good game but i mean there's obviously a lot of hyperbole about whether it's longevity is going to be there like is this game going to last is it something that that needs to be there um i'm still on the fence about that just because i mean there's a lot of games out there and you know how it is yep no i i totally understand that um, I'm kind of in the same boat. Um, I was I was hesitant uh, yeah. or, or even like trepidatious about this game only because there's how many how many games out there that are vying That's for all of your attention. There's Call of Duty, Fortnite, Overwatch even. They all want to be everyone's, you know, forever game. So Concord entering the fold. 
it's it's tough because yeah, you're you're only you're trying to get the attention of all those players, but also yep. amass a community of your own. But then also yep. you have a price tag associated with your game when so many games, even Halo now and and Destiny, the game we're talking about, yep. uh, being adjacent went free to play so it, it's a tough sell i think in today's market to say listen you're gonna buy into this game for 40 50 dollars if you're in canada yeah. um but the perk is is that you know you get all the content for free all the updates for free and stuff like that so i think that's very interesting but coming into the game i said okay well i'm gonna i'm gonna stay open-minded that's that's what we're here for to remain par yep. impartial until we start playing the game and everything and i i came in thinking okay as long as they can sell me on the gameplay as long as it feels good as any good competitive shooter yeah. should i'm i'm willing to give it my time i'm willing to uh, to give it uh, some hours and everything and bobby i'll tell you within that first game that i played i booted it up it has quite a substantial like opening cinematic i wasn't expecting yeah. like, any kind of story I mean, or anything like that uh it all looked really really nice uh to be honest i i thought it was a good introduction to some of the characters uh, the core free gunners that will uh i guess be following but anyways getting into that first game it, it immediately clicked for me i was like oh my god this feels like destiny's crucible yeah. And it makes sense. Concord uh, Firewalk Studio is comprised of a lot of uh, Bungie veterans, uh, as well as like people from all over the space yeah. that have worked on first person shooters and competitive games. So it really makes sense. But yeah, mm -hmm. you're you're talking about Haymar. You're talking about that double jump she has. That that does uh, spread across a lot of the the characters, the free gunners. There's 16 in total. A lot yeah. of them do have the double jump or at least some sort of traversal uh, adjacent move. Uh, some don't. Uh, obviously, the heavier tankier ones definitely don't. Um, but that being said, like it is a competent shooter. I, I was having a lot of fun with the, the shooting mechanics, the traversal mechanics. Uh, the, the game modes, they're fine. Uh, of the game modes that were in the beta, uh, I, I think I played like around eight, 10 hours, uh, uh, ranked up pretty, pretty nicely uh, yeah. with friends of the show. And um, yeah, I, I had a genuine fun time. But going back to what you were saying, uh, I do wonder what the longevity is. And I, I really hope that more people give it a shot because I think on, you know, first blush, the, you know, the the bubbles we exist in within social media, it's easy just to write this game off as, you know, just being noise. But I think there's something genuine here. Um, yeah. And that's exactly what it is. I mean, listen, if you're not willing to give this game a shot, then I don't think it's the game's problem. It's probably something to do with you because, like, legitimately... The only argument you could have is saying there's, you know, there's too much to play, but at the same time, like, how many shooters are you playing at the same time? Like, you can always pick one and stick with it, and, like, I feel there's obviously enough there to, you know, give everyone their, their you know, their cake and eat it, too, but, I mean, it's, it's, it's a comprehensive package. You're getting a pretty complete game. Yeah. It plays well. It handles well. I mean, obviously, we've only played the beta, but I mean, I feel like this is a perfect game that Sony could bank on with help from Bungie because now you know Bungie's obviously owned by Sony. Help, help Fire Sprite, you know, make this game better. Yeah, uh, it's Firewalk. Bungie, just, just to clarify, Firewalk, I know it's confusing. There's two Fire Studios. They're doing different right. things, but yeah, Firewalk is. Well, yeah, uh, let Firewalk. Yeah, let, help Bungie. And Firewalk work like let them work together on this. Like let these two cook. See what yeah. happens. I mean, the yeah. game has obviously the bones. It's there. We've played it. How how can you do make it better? Add more story yeah. elements to it. I think is that. And then start you know incorporating that into the the mechanics. Like if you want to add lore, obviously do it the way Destiny is doing it. Because I mean, it's not the best way, but like in terms of the gameplay, this game feels like it would be able to support that that lower that lower dump is just you know stuff you find in the world you know you talk to characters and something like that but i mean i'm just kind of curious to see what this studio does with it how they're going to support it and for how long that's kind of like that's the only kind of question i have because everything that's else is a big one yeah that's the only big one i have everything else kind of clicked for me if i didn't like one character i swapped to the next one because there's as you said 16 different uh characters to pick from Mm -hmm. they all handle pretty differently from what i played at least the the i think i went through eight or ten of them and yeah. um, they all handle pretty well like i i did like the 
I don't even know. He was like the Dax, the Drax kind of yeah, character. Star Child. Yeah. Yeah, Star Child. I loved his moveset where he like just pummels everything, he runs at them. Yeah, I yeah love that's that pretty cool. There are there are instances where you can use that to your advantage, right? Like you can tag against four other enemies and just take them down because he hits them and like they go flying. Mm-hmm. And you know, and um yeah, I just I need more time with it, but overall, like I'm positive about it i i know that uh this weekend one of our good friends matt was actually harassed for saying he likes the the game which makes no sense to me so yeah but that's not surprising that pe- that immature people are out there um uh th- that being said i i want to go back to to some of the characters because i think that's i guess the, the the way that i'm kind of approaching concord is that i think that's its most unique pull right now is that yeah. it, it's not it's not necessarily the game modes because they are very you know you got your tdm you got your control you have a kill confirmed all all of those uh, all great people. modes yeah great but nothing that stands out and is like this is concord and same with the maps i mean most of them look like destiny crucible maps if i'm being honest and not necessarily yeah. a bad thing they all i like i have always vibrant. loved destiny's maps like yeah, I, so, I, I will say that so like destiny's always had that as as a plus for me is their maps were always so good yeah but so, i think in yeah. terms of concord i think it's just the it heroes the right now it's it's the, the spread of 16 characters right now and i think i agree with you i think for me Hamar was the one that i attached myself to the most the second being lennox which is um this kind of like pistol uh, he, he runs around with a pistol he throws like a, a knife as his equipment but then he can also heal uh yeah. he, he also has like a super sick passive ability where you like double uh press uh, circle twice to kind of evade but then he automatically reloads all his weapons and i think yeah. hey if, if this game if this game's gonna have a competitive um scene a competitive community that's definitely going to be a a hero worth keeping an eye on Haymar, yeah like you were saying she has a crossbow which you can charge essentially like two shots enemies the only thing is that it's a, re, a slow re, uh, recharge yeah. but then um you have to aim your shots as well really like you you can't really miss and i think that's really really cool is that you have ones that are more you know more destructive like like star child which you can just like rip into and just kind of cause mm-hmm. havoc but then you also have you know your your sharpshooters there there's a sniper amongst the the mix there's characters that have smgs lmgs uh really a, a pretty widespread array of characters there's one that i didn't really put too much time into and i don't even know the name of her but she doesn't even have a gun all she does is throw knives and i think that is just one of the coolest every time i saw her and every time i was up against her i was like what is she doing to me like she's just nailing me one after another with like throwing knives and it's such a sick sick concept for a character but um yeah i think that was the the one takeaway from this past weekend uh being from like friday through monday is I just didn't spend enough time with the the characters. I spent yeah, uh, just, a lot yeah. of time with a couple or like a handful of them. So I'm hoping that this next weekend coming up, this next uh, open beta, which is available to everyone on PlayStation PC. Tomorrow. That's right. Yeah, it starts uh, starts tomorrow. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll jump back in. They're adding one new mode um, and one new map. And then again, you'll have access to the full 16 characters. So I'm going to I'm going to spend some more time with it, but so yeah. far as a first impression i'm 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 positive on it i feel like it, it's a good fit for sony i feel i mean what do they have that now that call of duty's kind of shifted to xbox like it really they don't have anything yeah i mean they obviously have destiny but destiny is not a playstation game right it is a multi-console game so i mean sony's gonna need their own shooter and obviously my my one wish is always gonna see kill zone i want kills of course yeah like, kill zone would be a great comeback for them but i mean this this pivot to um concord is fine like i a lot more positive about it than i was uh, a month ago when it was revealed uh, a lot more positive than i was a week ago when we learned the beta is coming mm-hmm. so yeah like yeah i think this is a good game i feel like there's obviously uh, a good grace period right now with this beta so you've all got two weeks to you know choose you know do you want to play this game in the future are you good with it like and i'm seeing that online now is a lot of people are saying hey i was wrong this is a good game i'm probably gonna stick with it and then i am obviously seeing a little on the lesser side that people said you know it's not for them which is fine totally but i'm glad the betas existed because i'm seeing just that positive spin now and that's always the case right you get this game you're not sure about it 
and then the demo shows you, you know, it, it is for you, and you, you end up buying it. So it's like, great, this is what's yeah. happening, and I'm glad. But yeah, I, I just gotta, I, I want to spend more time with the characters I'm not familiar with, and I know you don't understand what I'm saying. I know you understand what I'm saying. This is when you find that character you resonate with, you just want to play with them because it absolutely, sucks. it sucks playing with a new character, and you're just you're getting bodied by everybody. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what it comes down to, and I. And I, I like the fact that not everyone can pick the same character because it, it forces everyone to work together with their character and use their skills with each other and to support each other and like you know succeed in that regard. So it's it, it's something I'm looking forward to this tomorrow tomorrow afternoon when it goes live because yeah I'm gonna spend at least two or three hours tomorrow playing it. Yeah, I, I wanted to talk about that as well because even by the time the weekend started to. And like the latter half of the weekend, you could already, uh, at least me, I could already tell, oh shit, these kids are getting sweaty. These kids yeah. are getting so goddamn competitive with this game. They're bouncing shots. They're doing trick shots. They're wall banging their grenades and stuff like that. They already know the the the, the funnels, the, the choke points and stuff on the maps. I was like, holy shit, it's only been a couple days and we're already seeing that next level. That So I'm super interested to see what PlayStation does to foster a competitive community here. Because yeah, to your point, they really don't have anything right now as far as a like a true competitive game um one that could theoretically stand toe to toe with a halo or a call of duty so it's going to be interesting to see what they do there uh but yeah i'm just i'm just yeah. so very eager to see what this game looks like a month after launch when people are like the, yeah. the die hard community is like oh shit we're we're going competitive we got our boys here five five v five and just i, I want to see if this game ends up having a ranked mode and stuff like that because i i think that would be super smart to have something to foster like hardcore gameplay here that would be that'd be really cool and i'm i'm yeah. excited for it and that's exactly where i'm at too so yeah i'm looking forward to the next month or two and see where it goes and then I would be down to revisit this game in six months, so yeah. like maybe closer to, to Christmas and see where we're at and how everyone feels. But like it, it is a good move for Sony. I just hope it works out, and that's kind Me of too. what we have to leave it with. We have to just leave it that. Like, is it gonna, is it the right move, and is it going to work out? So yeah, I'm all for it. Yeah, I'm, I mean there. So. The thing is, is that we still don't know a roadmap. We don't know any like post-launch plans yeah. aside from those additions of, uh, you know, weekly story drip feed content, more cinematics and stuff like that, which I think is all well and good. I think as long as they're engaging and the story is fun and the characters are fun, I'll keep watching. I know that there are going to be people who jump into Concord and just hit skip and for them, I mean, that's fine as well. If you're only there for the gameplay, that's totally understandable. My my thing that I keep coming back to is PlayStation had to have seen something very special with this game to buy the studio. And that that's why where I keep coming back to it. And I'm like, OK, I, maybe we're not seeing it right now. Maybe we'll see it closer to launch, post launch, stuff like that. But there has to be something here for PlayStation to say, we're going to buy Firewalk Studio in the same in the same, you know, relative yeah. breath as oh we're gonna shut down last of us online because it's just not gonna work out there's, there's a was, reason why this game exists and something like the last of us online doesn't work there's a reason why twisted metal is a, this rumored twisted metal game doesn't exist anymore but concord does so i'm very yeah. very eager to see why i i think that would be a, well first off if Twisted Metal comes back, I will lose my shit. Like, that's what I'm going to say right there. <laughs> yeah. Because Twisted Metal 2 was, like, the highlight of my childhood. Like, I love that game, playing with my mm -hmm. friends. If it goes multiplayer, like, I know multi Twisted Metal Black had some elements, and I think Twisted, no, sorry, Twisted Metal 2013 had that, but, like, it, I don't think it was the right developer. Sure. I think now would be the best time to bring it back. And if that goes hand in hand with, like, something like Concord, and they both succeed, like, I'm all for it. Like, mm -hmm. That's what this. That's what Sony's platform needs is multiplayer games, exclusive to Sony. Because yeah, like Halo, is Halo. We all know Halo. Is it as fun as it used to be? No, but it's it's still a pretty good exclusive. So mm -hmm. I mean, you can always boot it up and you know what you're getting. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I, I I hope that uh, as we start, you know, uh, the the tail end of this Concord uh, conversation is that I hope that PlayStation doesn't approach Concord with the same metric of success as it did hell divers. I hope yeah. that they're not like, well, we already did it earlier this year. Why, why isn't it happening again? Because I do think 
hell divers is such a unique situation that i personally i don't think playstation will ever replicate so i hope that it's not okay we got to hit numbers like like hell divers for concord to be a success i hope that they can take an approach of let's foster a community keep it going drip feed content and you know see where this takes us in a year two years i just hope that firewalk studio has a chance to really invest in this game and it isn't hey well we tried we're we're not hitting the numbers that we wanted and in six months a year uh we're no longer seeing story content we're no longer seeing new maps new modes and stuff like that and then inevitably you just know that that's the canary in the coal mine for support to be shut down and i just hope hope that that's not the case yeah i really hope not i mean like like we've all agreed now at this point we're cheering for success so like yeah let's 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 let, I, i'm gonna think positive i will never try and be like well i'm not gonna be opti- pessimistic about it i'm gonna try and be optimistic and like i i pray the developers do well because like mm-hmm. i mean destruction all-stars was a good game but look what happened there it's just kind of vanished right look at foam stars was, there was there were good foam bones stars. there as well but i mean within a week hell divers came out and no one remembers foam stars I mean, I have it since since it came out, and that Same. kind of tells you, which was a shame because I I actually thought it was pretty good. So did I, and I I thought there was something there. I thought that was, was going to be a game that I would yep. you know come back to theoretically after you know a, a, a week or two. But then Hell Divers came out, and it was just nonstop flow of games. So I'm hoping that Concord can kind of yep. um, exist because I know a week after Concord comes out, Star Wars Outlaws, and I hope that the the, the noise in the conversation isn't hey forget about concord let's just concentrate on on star wars outlaws i hope that there's enough br- air to breathe in a room to kind of talk about both yeah i mean yeah. the good thing is they're not they're not similar so like that's true i think you're gonna have separate discussions for those like that is very true not overlap kind of like i mean oh, foam stars and health divers were both multiplayer games so like that kind of happened but that that's just that's just kind of how it happened but yeah single player versus a multiplayer i mean i'm sure there's going to be some comparisons someone's going to try and compare them for whatever reason but i don't see it working yeah but yeah i'm excited we, it's it's pretty close we're a month away from launch so like i i feel like yeah yep i mean i'm excited um looking forward to this next uh open beta i hope more people go check it out playstation yeah. 5 pc uh, let us know what you think and then yeah in a, in a month's time full rollout is approaching um yeah moving on bobby you've been playing nintendo world championship nes edition i'm curious very curious about this game let me let me, let me know what so, you think so i want to know what you thought first off like what did you think of this game when you saw it was announced because that's kind of where i want to start with is because what i learned okay. it was coming i was like this is stupid this is really like like who's gonna play this who wants to play this yeah why are they doing this so i'm sort of in this uh, si- similar situation i saw this i was like oh i know this is going to be for very specific people especially people who are nostalgic for the nes and very specific games people who love you know right. running the leaderboard running you know bragging rights with friends and stuff like that that's not me so immediately when i saw this i was like oh that's cool it exists i don't really have an interest in it and kind of forgot Fair. about it until today actually since we start started seeing uh, reviews i saw your review so um that was the only general reason why i even have this game on my radar right now is because reviews okay. came out so i was completely wrong about what this game is and i am eating my words because it actually is a really cool game um i've been playing it for about week and a half now okay and, um, it's been hard to put down because it's just it's the perfect bite-sized game um there's 13 games you can pick from so i'm just gonna read the list so it's yeah it's got super mario bros one to three uh super mario bros two the lost levels i okay. believe yeah. is what it is and then it's got the legend of zelda the adventures of link um metroid donkey kong balloon fight excite bike ice climber kid icarus and kirby's adventure okay and basically what it does is all these titles are available from the start so you can pick and choose whatever game you want to start with and you just do bite-sized challenges so one might be in super mario bros one you have to get the mushroom as fast as you can the first one in that level in level one one so you know you jump over the goomba you hit the block and the mushroom comes up and you just have to get 
the fastest scores possible. And as mm-hmm. you do that, you, you obviously earn more coins and those go towards unlocking different levels, different pins you can equip to your profile and like different icons for your profile that you take all online. And as you're doing this, you're obviously trying to beat your best time. So the faster you do it, the more coins you unlock. So if you do it uh, like a point second faster, you get an extra five to 10 coins. And you just keep going until you feel like you're, you know, you've done the best you can, and then you move on to the next challenge. So one other challenge might be in like in Legend of Zelda, you have to find the Octoroks in the map. You have to, and then you have to kill them all as fast as you can. And that's kind of where the, the next level, the next challenge is. And okay. it just it just rotates. So like another one in Metroid, you might go to, and it might say, you know, you start at the bottom of this map. You have to climb all the way to the top as fast as you can while dodging enemies. And it's not as easy as it looks. It actually reminds me of how far games have come and how much better they control in 2024 and it's just um it's a reminder that um games used to be a lot harder than than they are today that, that's my biggest takeaway because there's some of the challenges that i'm doing for example super mario bros 2 i mean we all know that game kind of has like an infamous development cycle it wasn't originally a mario game they just you know, change the characters from another franchise to, to Mario characters. And their characters are very floaty. I don't know if you remember that, Steve. Oh, that. yeah. Yeah. Totally handled totally different than the the other Mario games at the yeah, time. Exactly. It was really weird at the time. But there's like one challenge where you have to play as Luigi. Luigi has always obviously been known as a little bit faster than Mario. He jumps a little bit higher. And in Mario Brothers 2, he's he's really really hard to control oh very... the worst i never liked playing as luigi it was almost impossible to play as exactly him. so in yeah. this game here you actually have to play as luigi so one of the challenges you have to play as luigi you have to remember the the carpet that's in the air you have to jump on it yes yes there's I one do. thing there's yeah. one challenge you have to start with that and then you have to jump on the carpet throw the enemy off and then you have to get to the other side of the map and find the hidden key while facing off against the mask remember the mask that would like would follow you terrifying yeah terrifying so you have to do all this as fast as you can without getting hit. So you have to basically start at one side of the level, get the get the carpet, find the key, and then unlock the door as fast as you can. So it's stuff like that. And it sounds easy, but knowing how difficult Luigi is, it really makes it a lot more difficult. So it might take someone like 15 seconds. On a good try, it took me 30 seconds on, on, on one try. And it, it's, okay. just, it's just – uh, a way to kind of just remember that these games are just beyond difficult for what, yeah. what they are compared to today. And is it, and the, the challenge of Escalade. So like they started off really easy, like I said. Like one might one might be Donkey Kong, the original Donkey Kong's level, and you have to climb up one ladder. Simple enough. The other one might be an excite bike where you have to get through the entire level without crashing. You have to make sure okay. your bike doesn't, you know, um go off balance. You have to always center your, your character so he's lying flat. And it's just stuff like that. It, and it just devolves into some madness because every level becomes a lot more maddening. And it's just like, how do you, how do you, how do we do this as a kid? Like another one, you have to do like the Samus, you have to get the morph ball power up as fast as you can, which means you have to go through one of the, the map doors. You have to fight some enemies and get them, get the power up. And then that's it. It ends. And then it just moves on to the next level. So it changes my, it changed my mind of speed. Run. I, I appreciate speed running a lot more now. I oh, okay, cool. Why, I kind of understand why people love it so much. I mean, I obviously liked it before. I, I've watched awesome games done quick, but doing it yourself is a lot more um, eye-opening. Mm, I say yeah. eye-opening. It really is because you've learned so many things. Now, I, I feel like I can get through this game a lot quicker than I did when I started. And it's taught me a lot of things, a, lot, a little bit more patience with what I'm doing. And it's just, it's cool. But the downside is, and I'm sure you've seen this, you might see this online. There is no leaderboards for the. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. What, 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 what's Nintendo's deal right here? Come on. I don't really? Know. I, don't know. I don't know why they they decided not to include leaderboards for the main mode, which is like the single player stuff. Okay. But if you go to like the survival mode and the world championship mode, there are leaderboards there, but they're a little bit different and. Um, World Championship mode is basically five challenges that, that are done weekly. So every week you, you'll, there'll be different challenges. You do them as fast as you can. Okay. You ju- you're just basically competing against yourself and other players' ghosts. So like I, I played off against a couple of people 
uh, from the States and I saw their characters do the thing. And then it just basically counts the best um, time between everybody. And then it just goes to a leaderboard within your age group. So if you're, say, like 30 years old, anyone within your age, you're, you're competing against them. And that's basically what? who you're competing against. It's weird. <laughs> it makes no sense. Okay. And that's what, that's, I don't know why they did that, but there is, there's global leaderboards based on your age. Don't ask me why. I don't know why that's, that's so that's weird. There. Why is Nintendo weird? I don't know. I don't get it. But I mean, it's it's something. It's better than not having any leaderboards. But this is kind of where I, I found myself browsing towards too. And unfortunately, we only got what's today Wednesday. So the the servers went live on Monday evening here in Canada. So it's oh only been goodness. two days where the servers were live. And I I spent about four or five hours just doing challenges. So, but the problem is with yeah, well, the problem with that is you can only do so many things, right? Like if it's a weekly challenge, you're only doing the same five challenges just to get the best record, and then it, it's done. It's so for for the main mode, what's yeah. what's the point? It, like, what do you like if you're just playing by yourself and you don't get your your you know your your time on the leaderboard right. or you see uh, ghosts of other players? Like, what what are you working towards? Uh, basically just unlocking more challenges, unlocking pins for your character, stuff like that, basically. Oh, okay. It's, 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 I, I guess that's what they wanted to do is just basically, here's your 150 challenges you can do every mm. game from the, from, from the beginning, but there's no leaderboard. So, so you, I guess you're that's... just competing to unlock stuff for online. I guess. But yeah. Even at that point, you're just getting different pins. You can equip different titles. Uh, different icons and it's just like it's just stuff to make your profile look better and that's really where it ends up interesting yeah so, that, that seems like a like a missed opportunity to have a leaderboard for that that main mode i know i don't know if they're gonna probably include it in an update i mean i can always ask them but like i mean i i assume what we're getting is what we're given so it's it's whatever's here is here yeah so, i just don't know why yeah. they wouldn't want like some sort of like competitive community built around this game because that blew yeah, it blows that, my mind. It blows a lot of people's minds. I know that's what everyone's been saying online. Yeah. It's like, why would they not do this? But hey, you know what? That's fine. Um, there is a survival mode, which is pretty cool. I don't know if you ever played like Tetris 99 or Pac-Man sure. or whatever. It's kind of the same idea where, you know, in this case, it's only eight players and not even players. It's their data. So the, you just basically compete against their ghost data here as well. So it's not actually people. So you just oh. see their, their best attempt. And it kind of goes down from eight to four players to two players so basically the the top eight in that start and then whoever wins in that top eight goes to the top four and then top four goes to the top two and then it, and it ends up in the top two so whoever wins the, the the top two basically becomes the winner of that survival mode and it's just boy uh, sorry what, what's the data based on like your average or your most recent run it's i believe it's your 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 best run so whatever your best, best run, run. So got it yeah. and then okay. it's just basically that's it. That's basically the mode. And you just go through two different gauntlets. So there, there's a silver gauntlet, which is the, I guess, easier challenges. And like, they're okay. Like they're obviously very, they're varied. Like they're just one might be a Metroid challenge. One might be a balloon challenge or might want like a Kid Icarus one. And the, and the, the gold ones are the same kind of games. You just, they're harder. So you might do like hard, normal to hard to like legendary. And like legendary is like the five star, like the hardest one you can do in this game. And like, they are very difficult. Like one, one I did was uh, complete Super Mario Bros. 3 World 1 um, within, you know, as fast as you can. And, like, you can't do any, obviously, power-ups. You just got to speed through it. And it's it's sure. hard. But, yeah, it's basically it's just a, it's a fun way to interact with these legacy games. Like, it's, it's just a way to revisit them without really yeah. having to revisit them. Like, I mean, I don't think I will ever go back to any of these games to play them fully. But I mean, this is a good way just to kind of revisit them. And be like, oh yeah, I remember this, and you know, it's just a fun way to just remember what, what games were like thirty years ago. And oh, for sure, cool. Cool. And, and how difficult they were as well. Um, oh, that's, that's the that's biggest thing. Kids don't even recognize is how you you want to talk about Elden Ring and Bloodborne. Yeah. You, you guys don't know shit. No, play Mega Man Two. Yeah. Play oh Mega my 2. God. Yes. Yeah. Mega Man 2, Castlevania, Lion King. If you guys really want to get into to some get, get good status, play Lion King. Yeah, and there's things like that. So, like, I, I I feel like this is a good starting point if Nintendo decides to revisit this Nintendo World Championship. That would be cool. I would like to see an NES edition, or sorry, SNES edition. Yeah. 
or or like just work with Capcom to do like some of their NES games because they had some of the best Cap Capcom had some of the best NES games of all time. Like they had obviously the Mega Man games, they had Ducktales, they had the Little Mermaid, which is a great game on on NES. They had uh, Tailspin, mm-hmm. Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. Like those games could be yeah, so many so many licensed games they they had yeah. under their belt. Yeah, Capcom was really a driver for those. And then, yeah, and then Nintendo also had a lot of first-party games that I'm surprised didn't make the cut. Like, they had golf, they had soccer, they had baseball, mm-hmm. tennis, pro wrestling. Wild, where's Wild Gunman? Wild sure. Gunman was a cool game. Even, uh, even like, Duck Hunt. Like, I, I know you obviously need the gun, but, like, I'm sure they could have made it work with, like, a, the Joy-Con. Oh, for sure. Like, that would have been cool to have. But it's just, like... Why these specific games? Like, what? Why? What? Why, why do they choose these ones over the hundreds of NES games that are, are like ripe for speed running? Yeah, I don't know, but, um... but yeah, I mean, the and the other benefit is it's not a fully pressed game. I think it's like forty forty dollars in Canada, forty nine dollars, maybe fifty bucks. Okay. Obviously, it's a little bit more pricey than I would want it to be, but I mean, it's still not an eighty nine dollar game in Canada. So, I mean. It's a fun little blast from the past, is what I'm going to call it. It's thirty nine dollars in Canada. Okay, that's not so too bad. Not too bad. That's approachable. Yeah, yeah. If you're if you're into that, again, I just from an outsider's perspective, I think that not having a leaderboard, an online leaderboard, is no, it's massive, not. massive. It's massive. weird. It's so weird to me. But I mean, ultimately, like we said, this is a very niche game for a very niche audience, but. If you're obviously curious about these games, like they are cool. It's fun to see them. Play it. Play it once, play it twice. It's a shame you can't rent this kind of game because it would be a perfect game to rent for a weekend, get your fill and return it, I feel like. Because it's just these are all games I used to rent and then return them on the weekend. So it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Cool, cool. Um Bobby, before we continue, I'm I'm getting some audio from your end. My your Thing might be a little too loud. I think it might be a too loud. Oh, yeah. let me fix it. Oh, good. I'm gonna keep this in anyways. It's good banter. It's good. This is how this is uh how the sausage gets made. Uh, this here. is what happens when we're in uh, a heat wave in the middle of July. That's is right. that better? I believe so. Okay. It, it, it was me coming through your your TV. Oh. Or your uh, your monitor, whichever one, your speakers. It's my it's my sound system. It's something. Whatever. It's okay. It's okay. We're we're good. We're good. Uh, this is this is how things happen at uh, the console creatures uh, factory content factory. Uh, the next game I wanted to talk about is the game that's actually coming out today. It's Dungeons of Hinterburg. It's a little indie game from Microbird Games. It's uh, launching on Xbox, PC, Xbox Game Pass as well. Uh, it's a little indie game. Very inspired by Zelda in so many ways. It's got an awesome, like kind of cell shaded, uh, animated art style. Uh, but essentially, what it's all uh, based around is that you play as this uh, this woman. I don't know her twenties, early thirties, and she decides, you know, screw screw everyday life, screw everyday responsibilities. I'm going to go to this little township, kind of like a like a Swedish European township, something like that. And just go on like a vacation. Uh, But in this world, in this town, what they really uh, do is they invite tourists in uh, to go slay monsters in dungeons. And essentially the whole thing is like, it's this this tourist attraction. Come by, go to 25 dungeons in in the area, split across like four biomes um, and just have your vacation here. And, you know. Un- unwind while while murking some some monsters and stuff like that. So the the crux of the game really is this kind of interesting tie-in or like meld between a Zelda dungeon crawling kind of game and vibe with kind of a cozy relationship game as well. Like it's it's a little laid back in in some regard. So the game itself is uh, broken up by day and every day you wake up and you you go out into the the town of hinterberg you might be able to interact with a friend there kind of have a coffee in the morning and kind of just discuss the the goings on in hinterberg and kind of plan out your day and you can choose to go 
to one of four major biomes um, and tackle a, a dungeon that day. So the day is broken up by, yeah, you, you go out in the afternoon, you go complete a dungeon, and then you come back and it advances time. So no matter what, if you go complete an activity out in the field, come back and then it's the evening. Now the evening can be spent doing two things. Uh, it's, it's a chance for you to go to the shops and get, you know, better equipment, better uh, potions and everything for your next day. And you can also then start interacting with some of the, the residents in Hinterburg. And I think this is really where the, the gameplay loop starts starts clicking for me is that the the dungeons which i'll get to in just a little bit are fun and exciting and everything but it's the social aspect that that really drives some of the the progression because you can you can start forming relationships friendships with these with these characters and they all provide perks so for instance there's one that kind of runs a a, a tourist uh guide uh store and his his major thing is that once you get to know him and you're you're friends with him, he can he can remove quote unquote goo from any equipment that you found. And when you're exploring dungeons or exploring some of these biomes, you'll find uh, equipment that will be covered in goo and basically unusable. Their their stats are nerfed. Uh, to, to basically not even you know right. viable as an option and you can bring them to to him he'll clean them up and then you can start using them and everything there's another one that basically uh will increase your hp uh, another one will increase your your mana and stuff like that uh so then you can actually start feeling more powerful when you go out into the field and stuff like that so it becomes this whole progression system of okay i only have this opportunity for one day to talk to someone to form a relationship to, to progress this relationship and then you right. got to go to sleep after and then that resets the clock and resets that whole loop so it becomes this whole thing of okay what do i want to prioritize how do i want to go about interacting with these characters uh and then mm -hmm. there is a whole story there as well i don't want to get too far into the story aspect because i think that the story is pretty interesting i'm not completed the game yet uh of the 25 dungeons i believe i have I want to say seven more and they progressively get more difficult. They, all of them, uh, they start with like level one and go all the way to level 10, I believe. And right. as you start, uh, exploring more dungeons, you find better equipment that gets you better stats. So your armor stats are better. Your weapon stats are better. And then you can start thinking, right. okay, now I can start going after some of these more difficult dungeons. And the game is called Dungeons of Hindenburg, so a lot of emphasis are on these dungeons. Um, like I mentioned, there's four biomes um, in the game. Each biome uh, you enter, you can kind of unlock these skills that are very specific to each one. So there's a almost a, like a summon skill. So you can right. summon a kind of a ball that you can use to blow up. And then there's also a, a range attack in each biome. Um, another biome has one where you can like summon a uh, kind of a platform to form in front of you. One one that I really love is in this winter biome where you can summon a, a hoverboard for you to kind of like go down, and traverse, and kind of go down rails. It's kind of Tony Hawk esque in a way. Um, but yeah, all of these skills can not only be used in combat when you're fighting against some of the monsters, but they're all very integral in completing the puzzles in every single uh, right. dungeon. And this is where it really becomes like for me is itching that that uh, that scratching that itch of a old school Zelda dungeon where you go in. There's passive uh, dungeons that are like tr uh, platforming. There's also ones where you got to get past a certain door by doing uh, a certain puzzle. None of them are overtly difficult. I think a couple of them really left me like scratching my head for a little bit. Again, we're right. I'm playing this before launch so i really have no resource to to kind of look up oh what's the solution here but then again i've never had to i've never felt like oh shit i i just won't be able to to finish this game i won't be able to progress all of them really really approachable and a lot of them very creative in the way that they use those uh those magic powers to really utilize the the, the areas in the in the dungeon so that you can you can progress right. though it's it's interesting the combat's very simplified it's not it's not too complex you have a light attack a, a heavy attack and a dodge that you can use right. to kind of uh, balance the enemies that spawn on um but yeah it's it's an adorable little game it's got a cool gameplay loop and this was one where i 
didn't really have it on my radar up until recently and it was the the prospect of oh i'm going through dungeons i'm getting right. more loot i'm seeing my stats go up every so often and then i'm going back to hinterberg and i'm forming these cool relationships and that right. that to me is the the cool one of of being able to be like okay i want that person because that one gives me uh, better attack. This person has a special quest. This there's a dog here who can sniff out like a hidden dungeon right. for me to go to. So it's very creative ways uh, that you can start forming these relationships. Uh, have you have you been keeping track of this game at all? Is has it been on your radar? Oh, for sure. So like I obviously have been since day one. I mean, check okay. out my if you if you go on my Twitter, you'll see I've, I've been talking about it since it was initially revealed. I yeah. Play the demo. I loved it. I think it's a great little take on that persona slash mm -hmm. Zelda mission mashup. We'll call it, we'll call it mix up mashup, sure. whatever you want to call it. I just didn't feel like the demo did enough for me to um I guess want to check out the full game because it, it was a it was a good teaser, but it wasn't enough for me. I wanted more. Okay. I have the full game. It's loaded on my Steam Deck actually. I'm I'm I am gonna play it, but um I just had too many games on the go. Like I had Nintendo world championships and i had Bo, path of teal lotus so those kind of prioritized but like i have this game loaded i am gonna probably start it maybe tonight while we're you know watching tv i'm gonna sit down and get into it i feel like it is a good little niche game it probably won't be as big with the gaming crowd just because one it's summer and two um there's not enough word of mouth around like uh, no. i'm not seeing a lot of people talk about it and that's a shame because it it seems like it will be a good game from yes. what at least the demo showed me and what you've been saying it, it it offers things i want so like it's got those dungeons it's got a decent gameplay loop i know the combat you said was kind of basic and i kind of agree with you the demo didn't really excite me enough to want to you know see what else was there but it's serviceable for what what i feel this game is going to be so i mean yeah it's cool i i, I just want to spend some more time with it and i know that um it's going to be on game pass so like if people are, are you know on the fence it's free on game pass if you're subscribing so check it out that way yeah yeah totally i i highly recommend it uh, again uh performance wise the only hitch i've had is that yeah. uh with one specific power that you have um that you can pick up uh you start like spinning in a tornado almost and uh, right. just whipping around your sword and stuff like that i i've had like drop frames during that but otherwise Totally, totally runs really well on yeah. Xbox. Uh, I am going to load it up on uh, my ROG Ally because I do think that it's uh, it's a pretty cool game to play on a handheld. I think it's ripe for uh, some handheld action there as well. But um, yeah, I highly recommend it. I think if you're craving something a little small, a little more bite sized, nice thing is, is that because of its inherent you know day to day uh, gameplay loop. You can play a dungeon and do like a full full a full day in that in Hinterberg in probably 20 minutes, a half an hour, if I had to guess. And that's that's awesome. If you only have so much time to actively play a game and progress, you can play, you know, one or two dungeons a day and just kind of chip away at it or just power through it and complete it in probably 20 hours, I would say. I'm I'm. I'm on the yeah. tail end of the game, and I'm probably at I don't know 15 hours. So it's an approachable it's game. Perfect. It's not too long. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Shout out to them because I, I think that they nailed something special here. I I totally agree with that. I mean, like I said, based on the demo, I feel like this is going to be it will review pretty well. I think so. It's just not going to be something a lot of people are, are paying attention to, which I feel like they should be. So let me drive this home. It's on Game Pass. You have no reason not to check it out. That's I'm so going to be checking it out for sure. I know Steve's playing it. So just just join us in playing it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Bobby, the final game on our roster for this uh, is a game that you were recommending to me before yes. we started recording. It's Bo, Path of the Teal Lotus. Talk to me about yeah. this game because you, you, just based on the, the elevator pitch you had earlier, I'm, I'm eager right. to hear more. So, I mean... It started as a Kickstarter uh, a couple years ago. Okay. They, sorry, they, they is Squid Shock Studios. And basically what their pitch was is this game is a mix of Okami, Hollow Knight, Paper Mario, mixed with Spirit Away, Princess Mononoke, and um, yeah, that's it. So Jeez. if you like any of those properties, this is kind of a combination, all that. So Bo Path of the Teal Lotus is like, 
it's a Japanese folklore hand drawn Metroidvania with a mix of like Souls like elements. So you've got that big shining open map that we all love in Metroidvania games, yep. and you play as a a, a blossom fox, which is like a spirit that basically it's kind of like a mischievous fox that kind of lives in the bamboo forest. And your task was saving this world from this giant Titan that kind of, you know, comes to life and starts threatening to destroy Japan. Mm-hmm. So this, this, uh, this, this Kami, this God basically blesses your earring, which is like, which transforms into a staff, which is the bow staff. And this staff basically gives your, your Fox the ability to, to glide through levels and bounce around levels. And basically the premise is that you fight a lot of enemies, but the gimmick of the whole bow is you can double jump. So if you hit an enemy, you gain a jump. So you can oh, cool. hit the enemy, cool. jump, and then you can go up to like a little bit higher, find another enemy. Or you can um, use your staff to get around different puzzles in that app. So like you might have a bunch of like uh, flying lanterns that you have to, in the level, and you can hit each one to get up to like hidden hidden uh, collectibles or like uh, switches mm-hmm. or different bamboo. You're gonna need to upgrade your weapon. And I say it's like Hollow Knight because that Ho- Hollow Knight has a difficulty curve in the combat. It is a, it is harder to play this game. It's obviously not as hard as Hollow Knight because that's like I guess the gold standard, but it, it's it's similar enough that I, I was strong at the beginning, and it wasn't until I realized like, hey, this is kind of like a Hollow Knight game. Got it. I have to, okay. I have to I have to step back and not just strike everything as many times as I can just to hope hope it dies. You have to kind of see what the enemy is doing, see how their how their movements are, and then strike and base off that. So you have to do that in tandem with bouncing around the level because this is a fox with a, a staff that. Is obviously there to let you move around, you know, as fast as you can. So you're very agile in this in that regard, and you're just jumping around the level while, while trying to strike once, move away, jump to this other part of the level, strike, come back, and just figure out how to get through the next part. And it's it's a really cool game. the The graphics are insane. Like I've been playing on the Steam Deck. All that the the colors just pop off the screen. Like it is everything's hand drawn. It's so meticulously put together. And the score is just like it's 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 it is something straight out of like a spirit away or studio ghibli movie. Like it is just it it resonates so well. It's kind of moody, but it's also like uplifting, but it's 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 very steeped in like Japanese instruments and it's it's cool. And yeah, I mean it, it's out today. No, it's out tomorrow on consoles and pc and i'm i'm just wrapping up my playthrough right now i'm trying to get the collectibles i mean i have nothing but praise about this game it is a cool little game i'm i'm actually shocked that this game is as good as it was because like the 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 demo kind of left me you know i was like is this is this really going to be as good as it was because the demo was kind of short it's like it was like an hour and like it didn't really do enough to introduce me to to what i what the actual game was but Everything kind of comes together. You given you're given this obviously obviously cool bow staff, and then you get these cool charms that can like basically make your gameplay. It it helps your gameplay vary. So you can add like different charms that like can either improve your 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 passive stuff. So you can get more health when you have when you're near this kind of enemy, and it, it boosts right. your enemy, it boosts your health. Or you can get something that that makes your 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 secondary weapon stronger against certain enemies. Or or you can find um, you know the basic stuff like you have like the magnet that that draws all like the collectibles towards you like all that that's very hollow knight too it's it's exactly like hollow knight in that regard like there's they're called omamori so basically they're just charms you equip to your yeah to your to your staff and like they just basically empower the gameplay and why i see it's a souls like is it's got the estes flask system flask system involved in this so instead of having the estes flask you have um, a tea kettle so you refill your tea kettle by fighting enemies. So every time you strike an enemy, it starts refilling your tea kettle. The only downside okay. is the tea kettle you can't use it while you're moving. You have to you have to stand there and you have to let the tea. You have to start drinking the tea. Got so it. You're open to to being hit while you're you're, you're trying to heal. Yeah. So that adds a whole new element of you know strategy. Like how do I do I just you know suck it up? Do I try and heal while this enemy's coming at me, or do I you know? get out of the way or and try and heal somewhere else i i love this concept because yeah a lot of what you're talking about like the intrinsic gameplay systems this is just hollow knight and not enough 
because other games are really taking inspiration from that aside from hey we're a 2d difficult yeah. game a souls like if you will but yeah between the awesome art style this hand-drawn art style and some of these it's mechanics here insane. this is a game right up my alley holy yeah. i think you will probably love this game i think it'll probably be one of your highlights of the year i mean yeah. like i said the demo didn't do enough for me playing the full game and actually getting to sit down with it it blew me away i i feel like this is probably one of my favorite games this year in spite of what everything has come out like there's been so many good games and and somehow this game is just kind of like bubbled to the top just mm -hmm. because like the, the, the music the the maps the whole map itself actually flows pretty well i mean as you get more power-ups you're able to glide and you can actually move around faster and my only downside throughout this entire game is that once you get so powerful it the traversal kind of breaks the flow because you're moving around so fast. And because it's a Metroidvania, you only have so many places you can go, right? There's only four corners you can go in every corner and every, every map. So trying to figure out which way to go and you're, you're flying through the level. It kind of just breaks that, that traversal flow. So sure. I mean, it, it's not that big of a deal, but like you just get so powerful near the end. It's just like, Whoa, I got to slow down a bit. But it makes you, it rewards you in that sense. Like you get, you obviously fight these really cool bosses. You get a new power up, you get a new weapon, and you just keep going forward. So it is Hollow Knight adjacent. I'm going to yeah. say that. I like that adjacent because it basically is the same thing without being the same thing. I like and, it. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like if you like any of those properties, like I said before, you're going to like this. Um, I have nothing but praise for this game. It, it is one of the coolest games this summer. I hope it does well for for humble humble games and squid shock because they, they they did a really good job with this game that's cool and it's launching uh everywhere actually yeah from yeah so, so they just announced it today actually it was con or pc exclusive but after to, at launch it's going to be on pc console everywhere you everywhere you play so you really Same. don't have a reason not to play this game yeah, no, I'm definitely going to look into it. I appreciate you putting that uh, on my radar because, yeah, this game looks right up my alley. Oh, yeah. No, this is a Steve Ass game. Like, that, it that's is. Basically, if I could put like a tag on this, it is a Steve Ass game. That's right. Yeah. And it'll tide me over until Silk Song, whenever that comes out. I feel like that Toronto will be underwater by then. So, by, probably, yeah. By, by the time that. Silk Song comes out, Toronto will have broken away from Ontario and just sunk. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be Drake's mansion all over again. Oh my goodness! You saw that video too. What a it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Drake is not having a good twenty twenty four. He's really not. He's really not. Do you see that? <laughs> Quick it aside, was did you water. see it was sewage? It was like it was sewage. sewage. And uh, did you see see that assistant or whoever yeah. was like holding the door to his closet? I was like, dude, just just let it go. You it's just gotta done. let it go. Like, all your stuff's covered in crap, and it's yeah. Done. Like, I mean, it sucks that it happened to him, but it's also kind of funny. So, I mean, sorry, Drake, but you shouldn't have posted that video because now people are, are, are obviously looking to burn you. So you right? just burn yourselves. Like, yeah, exactly. Why even post that? Just keep it quiet. Whatever. Anyways, that about does it for this episode. Uh, Bobby, if people wanted to keep up with you online, check out your latest review for Nintendo World Championships. And then, Bo, where can people do that? Sure. Check out consolecreatures.com or on Twitter. My LinkedIn, my LinkedIn, my LinkedIn bio has all our breakdowns for social media. You've got your Spotify, you've got your YouTube, you've got Apple Music. We've got everything. We're everywhere. Amazing. Awesome. And as for me, uh, you can find me across the internet at Asvikvari. And as always, we really appreciate you checking out the show, keeping up with us online. And uh, we'll be back next week with other games to talk about. No idea what uh, what the agenda will be, but uh, I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun. But until then, again, we appreciate you all. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.